is a batsman. How many of you play cricket? First time I see many hands going up. <laughs> okay. So, you are a well set batsman. You are 30 runs. So, no bowling change so far. First two bowlers are bowling. You are batting so well. What will the opposite side captain do? Chain the bowler. Suddenly somebody else will come. You flash. It goes behind the wicket. Now you wonder what is this? The speed is changed. The way delivery is changed, where he pitches changes, how he swings change, everything change. But smart batsman will manage. But as soon as the bowling change is made, what happens to the batsman? Some of them get out. Now the bowling is getting changed in the world economic scenario. Some will get out. Some will play well. So America is a very key, key player if not the leader, a key player in the world economy and they are in trouble. What is this? This is Eurozone. Some time back, a group of European countries thought they must come together, join and form something called European Union. Short form is EU. They all should work in cooperation with one another and they should have a common currency. What is the common currency's name? Euro. Euro. They are, they were and they are still a significant group in the world economy. So what are some of the countries it's listed there. So Austria, Belgium, Cyprus, a oh, lot of countries. Importantly, France, Germany, the notorious Greece. Why I say notorious Greece? They are the start of the problem now. So Spain, another notorious country, Portugal. So these are the countries, their currency is Euro, and then they were established in the year 1999. Which one European important country is missing in the group? UK. UK is missing. There was a lot of deliberations and UK consciously said, sorry, we will not join this European Union. Good for them, they did not join because in a group of 10 people, there are 4 people who are smart and earn. There are three people who are very lazy and they only suck value from others, parasites. So therefore they said we are not very sure, we are not part of it. So UK, what is the currency name? Pound. UK pound is still better off. Euro, dollars coming down. What are these countries known as? They are known as? There is no meaning in calling them pigs. It's only an acronym. P-I-G-S. They have added another I. P-I-I-G-S. Okay. What are some of those countries? Portugal, Italy, Greece and Spain. And then they included Ireland. So and then they added one G. Another G also. With what? Great Britain. So Great Britain is also in great trouble. So once it was great, so that's why I said the equilibrium is getting reset and the bowling change, the set batsmen are tested now. Can you play now? Can you score now? That's what is happening in the world. So this is the problem area in the world. Real problem. What are those problems? Who can interpret this chart? I have removed some of the key words but still it's very explanatory. What, are, what do these numbers explain? What is these green long pencil syndicate lines? They are? What do you mean by debt? D-B-T. Debt. Debt in Somebody in Tamil. Debt in D-A-D. D B T Kadan. So suppose somebody is worth five lakhs. 
and he has borrowed 6 lakhs. He is net minus or pile plus? He is minus. So these are the countries. Even if you calculate what a country, countries, people create economic value, which is GDP, in one year. All Indians together, all Indians together, whoever creates value. I work for a company, my salary is value created. Somebody works in the farm, he produces something, the produce is the value he has created. Somebody acts in a movie, he gets money, that's the value he has created. So services, products, all put together, whatever value is created entire year by all the people is known as GDP. The whole year, whole population GDP, of that, there are countries which are at what percentage? 0% debt, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%, 120%. Whatever they are earning in the entire year, they are having debt more than that. So, that is what the countries we saw. You see Greece. Greece is the culprit. Their debt is around 117-18% of their GDP. It's not the people. Who are, who are the reason? Who are to be blamed for this? The government. Even now, India is... Nobody can say we will not go that way. Who can say for sure what is our debt? What is our GDP? No individual is bothered. We want what? Freebies. Give everything free. Leave us here. Then I will vote you. I don't know whether people are asking or politicians are prompting. Whatever it is, the more freebies are given. This is what they had given. After the world war, they came out with a lot of social security schemes. Free should be given to deserving and poor. Not to everyone. We all know how many affordable, can afford people are enjoying subsidy today. What size? Big size. There is a problem in distribution. Recently they corrected with some color cards and ration. Otherwise everybody was getting subsidized sugar. Why should everybody be given? Now there is a talk going on about LPG. Subsidy should not be removed. Why should somebody earning 1 lakh per month should also get a gas cylinder at 450 rupees? Like uh, somebody who is a wage earner. If you ask these questions, you will become unpopular. To remain popular, people are supporting. But how long can you support? We will be in the list sometime later. After 20-30 years, there is no go. Without earning, if everybody wants to spend, the world will see this. These countries were once developed countries. When we were in colleges, we used to say developed countries, underdeveloped countries. India will be in the list of underdeveloped countries. Many of these were in the list of developed countries. Where are they today? Lot of retirement plans, lot of freebies. Here we have some ambulance which is very good. But they have lot of medical facilities free. Everything free for affordable people. So this is the debt. What are the blue ones? Blue ones are minus GDP. It's not positive. If they are positive, they will extend along with the green. See, their earning is going down. The debt is increasing. It's a natural. When things work well, everything will work well. When things go bad, everything will go bad. There is a saying in Tamil, no? Patakalleye padum. Ketta kudiye kadum. So when it happens, it happens like that. Now, that's what people are challenging. I saw in BBC Asia or Delhi, Jawaharlal University, one Madam Ghosh economist uh, professor was interviewed by them and she was saying what these you guys are doing is wrong. You are cutting down expenditure. If you cut down expenditure, how will people earn? If people don't earn, how will your economy grow? She is asking. And that man is commenting, we have to cut expense because we don't have money, we cannot borrow more because already our borrowing is very high. Catch 22. If they spend, they are in problem. If they don't spend, they are in problem. So it's better to not to go near problem. They have gone near the problem. How they will come out? 
one generation will have to bear the burnt it is known as tightening the bootstrap in russia they did one generation will have to just work and take less and conserve money save invest and then next generation will be happy but which generation is ready to do this the social values are changing people selfishness i want to be good let several people suffer i don't mind i want to live in whatever posh i am smart i am doing let others so there's a challenge if it's a smaller country it's fine it's manageable a large country there will be a big social you imagine if something happens like what happened to what what are some of the countries where there are political unrest sudan libya imagine if something of that sort when people don't have and government is not able to give something happens in india who can control this population what's the size they are very small countries other countries can come to help nobody can come to help so it's better to be financially disciplined and use what we have earned that's a practice of india we always use our savings we have never borrowed as individuals as families government is different so therefore these are list of countries which are in difficulty because of their own making be it government or individuals but their earning is going down the debt is increasing the debt will further increase or even if they don't borrow it will increase right or wrong why interest for who there is a service cost no so they have to service so they have to earn for paying the interest they have to earn for their people living and they have to repay the capital and reduce the debt and come so they are saying we will reduce pension there is unrest people are protesting they say we will not give this we will not give that subsidies now like we are trying to cut they are trying to cut and people are on the streets they are fighting where they used to something something is suddenly going to go what they are in old ages 70 75 80 so they are so dependent so this is a trouble this is euro area gdp and usa gdp what is striking in the entire slide water is whatever is above the center line that's positive gdp water is below the center line it is negative gdp you can see between 19 2008 and 9 when the first recession hit they went down by 0.3% 0.4% 1.9% you see it's going on increasing so negative gdp means so much of value erosion in people's earnings and value then there was quantitative easing by bernanke and obama obama managed it well so they did, did all that and then it reduced to 0.01 then 0.40 0.2 i would explain the double dip as you imagine a boxing arena the two people are fighting boxers say one is recession the other is the government government and the recession are fighting after three rounds recession hits hard on the face of the government and government falls down injured bleeding weak exhausted gasping for air oxygen very weak only three rounds over recession is saying come on government must have strength quantitative easing lot of financial support do all that it's like mustering all your energy coming back again to fight you fight against corruption uh, sorry we cannot avoid the word no so even if you don't want it comes in so recession so recession this time there's a fight between the mustered energy government is fighting recession is fighting both are fighting another blow on the face and the government falls down the boxer falls down again what is the probability of him coming back second time hit and falling down will mean he is becoming much weaker that's what is double dip recession first time recession governments are clean clear mind they want to fight it they are good they want to go do all that they'll do try everything they've lost 
All the energy they had, they have come and fought second time, they have lost that also. Where is money now for third fight? That is what is double dip recession. Double dip, second dip is a strong signal. That's why as soon as there were some symptoms of double dip, American stock markets fell like stone. It dropped like stone, just duck. 400 points, 500 points, Dow Jones in one session. It's a shock. So this is what happened in Euro and this. What, what is this, this group of countries? You are able to find something interesting? India is there. In what color they are all? Earlier we saw some group of countries in what color? Red. The pigs, no? Red. Eurozone was in blue, but pigs were in red. So now this is all in green. Can you name some of the countries without reading the letters there? Identify the countries. Okay. So these countries are in short, by acronym known as what countries? BRIC nations. So Brazil, Russia, India, take the first letters, they are known as BRIC nations. So they are the greener patches in the world map today in economic. So Japan people, so not Japan, sorry, India and China people are doing very well. So Russia is doing well. Brazil is also doing well. They are known as BRIC countries. This is another arrangement where in the economic area, what is the GDP levels? Let us skip this. Very nice colors, no? Okay. You want to clap? Okay. So as soon as you see an Indian flag or the, the map or Abdul Kalam, you must start clapping. So we must remain Indians, isn't it? So we must keep injecting ourselves of this. We shouldn't. So this is what will take us, keep us together and take us together. Right. So, so just some, some, uh, some, some of you can say why we have put this up arrow. And they talk about this arrow. What all this arrow? Okay, good. So it shows increasing GDP and Indian economy. Fine. What else? Any other observations? Hmm? It's developing. Yeah, the sign of development, it's going up. Good. Then? Excellent. It's a very good observation. Okay. Nose for detail. So the arrow is not just straight. There are? Downs and ups. So it's not that all is rosy. Some quarters we also miss out. We come down. But the direction is up. In between there are dips. Okay then. Fine. So this is a report card of uh, India. So as updated, it could be a little old by months. But still it's worth looking at it. So GDP is 1.53 trillion. So what is, what is another thing that you can note in that interesting thing? In the first line, it only. Very smart SONA students. So it's in dollars. You see, Indian economy, we have to tell in what dollar, what currency? Dollar. That's a universal measurement. Unless you explain in dollar, people will not understand how big we are. Because Nepal rupee is different value, Indian rupee is different value, Canada dollar is so... Still they are. So US dollar 1.53 trillion. So it's 10th biggest economy. It was some time back. Okay. Nominal. In nominal rates. So what is that PPP? Second line means. PPP. Who can expand it? Right. Like I don't know who said. Purchase power parity. What is the purchase power strength of this country? That's too much. That is too much because... Everybody in this country require material. So if there is any country in the world who will do a lot of construction in times to come, it will be India. Because we are yet to develop a lot of roads, yet to develop a lot of dams, yet to provide house for everybody. So therefore there is a lot of opportunity to buy cement, steel, sand, electricity, electrical items, copper, 
pipes, porcelain, name anything, distemper, paints, window frames, everything we require in India. Therefore, there is a huge purchase power parity in India. So that's a very strong indicator of future growth. Then what is the third one? Per capita GDP. Per person. What is the GDP per capita? So again they are calculated. GDP by sector. What is interesting in that? GDP by sector. Contrary to our belief. What is there? Pardon? Okay. There is some other interesting item in the same excellent service sector is 55 percent that's an indication of a matured economy now in chennai people buy idli dough or batter idli mau once we all used to prepare at home now people want to outsource and buy it from outside they have better things to do than do this all the time. That's relieving some people for better jobs. That's what's an indication is. People used to do only washing clothes. A whole day washing clothes, cleaning house. Human resource was wasted. Now laundries. People used to walk miles and they were proud. I used to walk 10 miles to school. They were very proud of how much of human hours wasted in just walking. Energy wasted in walking. Now they have bus services. So service sector has come. In Chennai, Saturday, Sunday, you don't get any seat in any good restaurant. For that matter, in no restaurant. Full. People want to eat out. They don't want to use all their energy and time only in cooking. Services. So many hotels. So lot of services have come to play. Lot of services indicate that, that people are able to afford and they are able to pay and take services from somebody else, which means they can productively engage themselves in something. So therefore, service sector 55% is a great indication, a good indication of Indian economy doing well. And interestingly, agriculture is only what? 18.5%. We are primarily an agrarian economy. This is what we used to always say. But now, with the advent of computers and numbers, we are able to collate and see now we are changed economy. Thanks also to IT boom. A lot of people, a lot of college goers. Otherwise, SLC was the best qualification. Somebody is SLC. Then later, he has some degree. Now, MBA is the floor level, minimum. MBBS is no good. So, somebody will have to do a lot of specialization. So, you see, the level is getting up. Its a level is getting constantly raised. So there will be a lot of MBAs, a lot of professionals in the country. So agri agriculture is only 18.5%. Inflation, what do you mean by what is given in the bracket? CPI, Communist Party of India. What is it? Consumer Price Index. Okay. So inflation according to consumer price index is this. Then what else are there? If they have to qualify this CPI, inflation is also measured in terms of what else? Somebody said it right, WPI, wholesale price index. The inflation, headline inflation that we hear in the news channels and we read from the newspapers is all based on WPI and not CPI. WPI is information taken from Mondays from wholesalers. CPA is measured at what point? At the purchase point, where the consumers are buying. Will there be a difference? There will be a huge difference. There is a value add. So this is based on CPI. Okay, population. Low poverty line is what percentage? 37. There is arbitrary people say, how do you define poverty line? The definition itself is, under threat, challenge. So, but whatever, the number that we have is 37%. Then, this and all we'll skip. Labor force, we'll skip labor force by occupation. Okay, now this is interesting. Labor force by occupation. What is interesting in that? Hmm. 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 See, you must read what is there and you must read what is not obvious to others. That's what is smartness is. You must be able to 
see something beyond obvious. Smart people are somebody who sees something beyond obvious. What is obvious everybody is seeing, so you are no differentiator. There is definitely an opportunity to read this line and interpret it differently. Hmm. Fantastic. That's reading between the lines. So you have to compare. So 55% of the people are engaged in agriculture, but they are producing only what value? 18%. Which means they are what utilized? Under or upper? They are underutilized. Disguised employment. You would have heard in economics. So 55, it's, I appreciate, it's good the thought. So 55% of GDP, uh, sorry, 18% is on the value contribution, whereas 52% of the people are engaged. And see the services, so it's ulta. So it, this is what is distribution problem. Because people are there and their parents place or something, so they are all there. This is what is happening. So when this gets corrected, the productivity of agriculture will improve. The productivity is low today. Many people get into and produce very little. And then unemployment. So in our country, we don't have proper reporting of unemployment. Not many go. And they have lost faith in the system. So therefore, they don't report. We cannot take this number seriously. And main industries also, I doubt there are many other industries in this. OK. External. India is net exporter or importer? Importer. Suppose we export, we have to pay. If we import, we have to take payment. So if there is a gap, what is it known as? Somebody said it, who said? It is known as? I heard that. Who said? Raise your hand. Yeah, good. So balance of payments, BOP. So I, I, I take from you 100 rupees. I give you 50 rupees. So 50 rupees is a gap. So I have to pay you some time back. So India is not a next exporter, it's a net importer. Therefore, there is always a balance of trade, BOT or balance of payment. Always we owe somebody else. That's why we want to keep reserves. So exports, we are actually doing well. I remember during 2007-8 when we used to talk in channels, we used to say that uh, the, tar uh, the target for Indian export is 200 billion. If I remember right, who was the minister then? <clears throat> I don't get his name. I am able to see his face. <laughs> okay. He, he gave a lot of thrust to exports and our target was 200 billion. Very nice to see. We have crossed that and we are at 225 billion dollars exports. We are doing well on exports. But, but why I am saying but? One, connect to something else. Don't just your mind should always work on. So the, what I wanted to say is analysis, synthesis, you must be able to see something given as a whole in parts. And you must be able to see something given in parts as whole. It's all scattered, but you must be able to see a common picture out of it. Then you are supposed to have what? You are supposed to have a big picture. That's what we call in HR parlance, people who have big picture is, they are all scattered. Information is different, different. But they are able to put it together and see the big picture. And they give a clumsy together information, but they are able to pick out something. They have a nose for details. So this one you can see, if you can connect, we can say, 